Welcome back to the Piney Woods Homestead, y'all. Y'all are in the cab of the excavator with me because it's starting to rain. And this is the only camera that we have, so I really don't want to mess it up. I'm working in the bone yard, y'all. And what I mean by that is where I bury deer every year after we have cleaned everything and we need to get rid of the bones. And so I try to pick a new spot every year to get that done. That's what I'm doing, getting this prepared. We've got rain coming in and it is raining. And I want to get some deer bones buried before it gets sloppy wet out here and I can. So guys, you're going to be with me in the cab here for just a little bit. Hopefully I can keep it from being too shaky for you. It really is like a crime scene on a homestead. <laughs> and I can say that because I used to do that kind of work. But underneath this plastic over here is where I have some remains that I need to take care of. And it's kind of in a wash going down to a dirt hole that I used to dig dirt out and keep for selling. And I need to get it on out of here before it gets too muddy. But it's like a crime scene, y'all, living on a homestead. It honestly really is a lot of the time. All right, now that I'll spare you all the gross details. We normally compost every single thing that we don't use. But when it comes to things that just won't break down, y'all, I bury that stuff. And it breaks down over time, and we end up being, having some good soil that we can actually dig out of here at times to top our raised beds off. So it gets composted right here, and it gets reused. I keep putting dirt back in the hole from other places, and, it's just one way to continue to use something that you think really doesn't have a use, but it'll take a few years for it to break down to the point that we can do that. And one thing that I am pleased with or blessed with, you know, if, if you've been following us for any amount of time, you know that I had, what can I call it? Caught the dragon flu. You know, I had that a few years ago. And it took my sense of smell away still to this day. Sense of smell, that's right. I, stick, I can taste a little bit, but I really can't smell anything. So when I do stuff like this, it comes in really handy, y'all. All right, I can give you a little more of a close up now because anything that was nasty has been covered up. And I dig a trench about three feet deep, y'all. And we've got great topsoil back here in these woods. And I use the same spot every single year, y'all. And it just keeps on breaking down the organic matter that I'm putting in there and turns it in to really good soil. So I can pull this out in a couple of years down to a few feet, use it in garden beds where I dig from dirt holes and other waste, trash from treetops, stuff that we can't use. I pack it back in here, it'll break down again, y'all. So we're really, in essence, recycling here on the homestead. All right, the rain has stopped so I can get this camera back out. That job is done. I knew it had to be done before I think they're calling for maybe an inch or two of rain over the next day or two. 
and we need it y'all it's dry as a bone if you saw me dig those post holes for that I don't know what you really call it that frame that I put up so that we can skin hogs y'all we actually also scald pigs but we scald scald our smaller pigs barbecue pigs because it's easier for Lisa and I to handle <clears throat> we've done it both ways in the past but with just the two of us or if somebody wants to come over and help it's a whole lot easier for us skinning Let's talk about the pigs real quick since I'm down here with them. Y'all, these topping pigs, and I'm considering those three nice chunky ones are topping hogs. We've got that one member, it's, uh, it's the runt. It's gonna be a barbecue pig this year around Christmas time that's the hope and these other ones man they are putting the muscle on they're eating basically about five and a quarter pounds of feed a day right now we're gonna up that here in a couple of days just keep an eye on your pig if you're raising one out you can tell if it's going backwards you don't want it to go backwards you want it to keep moving forward but not at such a fast growth rate that you're packing on a bunch of fat, not muscle. But these are looking fantastic. We've been raising them long enough now with the experience that my father has taught me over the years on how to do that properly. But I'm not sure if we're going to breed this year. I am not sure. And I know some folks had expressed interest about getting maybe a breeding guilt in next year. But I'm just not sure y'all it's just Lisa and I at home now we've got three topping pigs that's a lot of pork y'all and we really once we process these three for ourselves this year we're not going to need any pigs next year other than to maintain our breeding sow Dixie over there so we will probably skip a year on doing that because three hogs to top out y'all it is not cheap and it's not easy living this way processing your own animals a lot of folks make it look easy especially on youtube but a lot of folks are not doing it from start to finish pharaoh to finish some people are but a lot of folks aren't y'all it's a whole lot easier just load it up on a trailer take it to a processor but y'all for us the cost involved in that is just outside of our reach and our hope is that one day we can get to the point that we can just top out a few hogs take it to a processor and let them do all the hard heavy lifting for us that would be nice but you know i've done this most of my life y'all just like these deer that we clean every year i've been doing that since i was in my early teens and so i have no clue how many animals large and small farm animals wild game that i have processed since my youth i should have kept a record of it all these years as far as how many i have done but y'all it's something i enjoy to do i don't enjoy if if you've watched the trim out of time i do not take any pleasure in having to dispatch an animal whether it's wild game or what we raise on the homestead when I was younger, I could say that, yes, I loved it when I got a nice buck or something like that. But y'all, I think the older I get, the softer I get. And it gets harder every year to take an animal. I'm grateful. Thank the Lord for that meat because y'all, that's why we do it. That's why we raise animals. That's why we deer hunt for the meat. That's why we do it. Nice, clean food, y'all. Instead of going to the grocery store and buying, who knows what is in what you're purchasing from the system and i talk a lot about being separate from the system y'all that's what we're trying to do as much as we possibly can that's why we're living like this y'all we grew up doing it we really don't know any other way I, I can't really say that we do because at one time in my life it was paycheck to paycheck every two weeks and hit the grocery store didn't have a whole lot of time to be skinning out hogs we still did it though from time to time as far as my daddy raising pigs but as far as living this way y'all 
it is not easy and I don't care who tells you that it is the only way it's easy let's talk about how is it easy let me tell you some ways that it's easy you got a whole lot of money to start with that makes it easy because y'all it costs more money to raise your own meat than it does to buy it in the supermarket the system is designed that way y'all it's all about commodities the price of commodities and you can buy chicken you can buy pork most of the time a whole lot cheaper than you can grow it out yourself unless you are sitting on a hundred acres of corn and soybeans or not really soybeans because you got to dry them or at least roast them before you put them in to a feed for animals but unless you are sitting on a whole bunch of land that you're raising all your crops to feed your animals you're going to have to buy it that feed is expensive y'all but for us it's the peace of mind of knowing that we are eating unadulterated food whether it is coming from our gardens or coming from the animals that we raise but talking about making it easy starting out with a whole lot of money that way you are not you ain't really missing that feed if you're doing it for a hobby raising out a pig or two a year and when i say hobby y'all we used to have horses that was a hobby and i think it was about 200 dollars a month in feed that we had to purchase between hay the little bit of grass that we had and feed for those horses that's a hobby but it takes money y'all and that makes it easy oh another thing to make it easy loading it up onto a trailer and taking it to a processor ain't nothing wrong with that y'all that's a great thing to take it to a, i believe it's called an abattoir i believe it's how it's said some places but that makes it easier y'all you're not forced to watch that animal be dispatched you don't have to deal with those emotions not really and everything comes back to you nice and neat vacuum sealed ready to go put in your freezer here y'all it's a whole day of getting ready to dispatch that animal a whole evening of dressing that animal i'm talking about pigs y'all that's a whole evening of that then the next day after everything's chilled down on ice overnight that's how we do it i like butchering when things are firm when it comes to the pigs it's a whole day for lisa and i at least eight hours from start to clean up and finish with one of these 225 pound standing weight hogs that's making the sausage cutting the bacon out getting it into the brine or into the seasoning to sit for a week before we smoke it making all the sausage grinding it all packaging it all all of the butchering y'all it's a whole lot of work it's a whole lot of work and there when we do this there is rarely a break in between maybe to grab a pack of nabs or something but it's hard at it y'all the two of us now yes you enjoy that food for a year and that is a great benefit but it's not easy anybody tells you that it is it's probably about 20 years younger than i am all right so is it worth it by golly we wouldn't be doing it if it wasn't it is worth it because this pork that we're raising that we have spent five years breeding our own stock is superb the meat quality is just superb to any pork that we can buy in the grocery store it just is it tastes better it's darker we know that it's healthy because we've raised it Y'all, these pigs are a mess. I fill this water barrel up every couple of days. And you see all that water in front of it. We have had very little rain. They will sit there, drink from that nipple, and let as much come out as they can to get them a waller, y'all. They'll do that. They'll do it in front of their waterers. You can put concrete down if you want to, to kind of keep them from making a mess in front of them. But what we have found that, y'all, we're only topping it out. It's only in this grow out area of the woods back here for about four months because once the pig is six months old they're ready and they ain't got a month to go they can make as big a hole as they want to y'all and then that area is going to sit fallow until the next time we have pigs in there which is more than likely going to be a couple of years y'all all right i'm back in the excavator to end it here let me open the door it's probably an echo it's starting to rain again 
Y'all, I know I kind of rant a little bit about people wanting to convince you that living this way is easy. It is not, y'all. It's a whole lot easier to take your buggy down the grocery store aisle and load it up than it is to live the way that we are. But we look at the benefits, the health benefits from the high quality food that we are eating that we could not afford to go and buy somewhere else, y'all. We just couldn't do it. It costs a lot of money to feed these animals, yes. But y'all also know that we grow all of our vegetables. We don't buy any of that. So it really does even out over the years, the cost involved. Now, sometimes we get a hankering for something that we don't grow. Just like last night, Lisa brought us some shrimp home and I fried those things up, y'all. We, we like that kind of a treat once in a while for all the hard work that we're doing around here. We hope that we're an encouragement to you. You can do this. You can live like this. It just requires some hard work, y'all. But there is a whole lot more reward in it than there is not reward. So if you want to try this thing out, you want to put homesteading on for a try, or you just like watching because you grew up this way and it gives you good memories. It gives me good memories too, y'all. Doing all this stuff, I remember from my childhood doing the same things. Now I'm just 45 years old and doing it. It's a little bit harder. Guys, y'all have a good day, a great week, and Lord willing, and the creek don't rise too high, y'all. We'll see you on the next one.